Alright, welcome back to another episode of Mental Health Monday here with my boy Timotheo. What's up, boy? What's up? Get home safe. Hey, appreciate it, man. I got the whole photo in the back, you know, good painting, good pink, a good hue of blue. Alright, so tell the folks about who you are and what it is that you do. Um, my name is Timotheo Murphy. Mm-hmm. I am a multidisciplinary artist. Um, I, I wear a lot of different hats, but um, I, I'm a creator. Okay. Which hat are you wearing the most? Recently? Mm-hmm. So I'm working in this acting thing. I'm working out of New York. And um, uh, I'm just kind of like uh, exploring new territory. Um, you know, challenging myself. You know, changing. Or not changing, but uh, challenging myself as an artist. I never thought I would be doing acting, but this is something that's kind of a, a door that opened that I'm trying to now do my put my best foot in it. Okay, how'd you come across this opportunity? A uh, friend of a friend um, um, told me to go rehearse, uh, do uh, to go. Uh, what do you call it uh, when you try out? Not tryouts. It's another word. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, tryouts mm-hmm. for a role, and <clears throat> I got it. You know, um, audition. Audition. That's there we go. Word. Thank yeah. you. And um, yeah, and then I have an NDA, so I really can't disclose a lot of the stuff that I'm working on. But um, mm-hmm. I hope to share with this this stuff with you all in the future. Okay. How has that experience been working with a crew, especially coming out of the pandemic? With the new rules and regulations, it's it's been in, it's been pretty interesting. The shift, you know, people, you know, I like to people watch, and um, you know, New York is a different kind of, you know, beast that I'm used to than Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. Still a major city, but um, uh, just watching people interact even like shaking hands like sometimes you just got to be like you somebody do this or you know like, you know it's a lot of different adjustments that we're making it's like that i'm making paper, scissors yeah right yeah. you know to not you know impede my um social skills with people you know mm-hmm. i just wanted to you know be normal and what is you know this is the new norm now mm-hmm. it's mask and uber you know and i safety first you know actually it's kind of cool because i i ride a bike a lot so i'm always constantly wearing a mask Mm -hmm. so i'm not getting debris and stuff because once you get off a bike you get tons of like all kinds of debris you know eye boogers and stuff so it's good to put yeah glasses on because you're getting you're getting so much Mm -hmm. you know from car dust fumes and you're you're taking all that in your face so i always like to wear a mask when i this so that adjustment wasn't too bad but it was like it kind of got you know annoying when you didn't have it on all the way and somebody's like where's where are your mask you know it's just that kind of uh adjustments and just kind of letting it go when mm-hmm. people try to use that mm-hmm. as like a place for them just wanting to be heard which i'm not mad at them and i understand and we're listening and we're doing the best we can to um practice uh precautions for this invisible enemy mm-hmm. but um yeah uh i think what, what was the question <laughs> <laughs> what does normal look like for you normal looks like me normal i don't know what normal is well tell me your experience with the word normal i think i'm normal okay <laughs> I, I, I don't think i'm too weird I don't, mm-hmm. so, you know, surprise myself with certain things. I'm like, dang, I do. I like that. I'm like pizza with, you know, whatever. Or, you know, I don't know. Like uh, a lot of people think I'm weird for eating um, liver once a month. My parents used to make me do that. Once a month? Yeah, to make yeah. an household. Yeah, man. Yeah. That liver, man, is yeah. that iron. And that's one of my favorite dishes. Yeah, it's actually one of my least favorite dishes. <laughs> but I, I ate what was put in front of me. <laughs> I did too and I grew to like it but there's a lot mm-hmm. of uh, restaurants that kind of saute it and make it special mm-hmm. and uh, I try to stay away from meats but that's one meat that I would mm-hmm. have because it gives me a certain kind of super food boost feel, you know you know what's ironic about that one 
dish that I think I've been staying away from as of late is rum cake. Yeah. I'm the not. American version of rum cake compared to the Jamaican no, version no. of rum cake are two very, very different, different recipes. And I love rum. Yeah. Cake. I love rum cake. Mm-hmm. You know. And, and I, I grew up, I was raised on the black rum cake. Yeah, and rum also is, a, so, you know, Jamaicans, uh, rum rum is a, it's, it's a summer drink. So mm-hmm. that's why, you know, people drink it in the summer. I love rum. Mm-hmm. Um, shout outs to a couple of fellas out there who just, uh, I didn't want to mention any names, but they know who they are. They just uh, released a, a really nice rum. Mm-hmm. Um, so check that out. And that's local. You shout know. out to Sammy's. Yep, Sammy. Also, yeah. yeah, I just went over there. I was like, I like this. This yeah. is this is what home feels like for them to get that property in that corner. I was like, right, you talking about Bammies? Bammies? Is it? Bammies? Did I say Sammies? Yes, yeah, yeah, my bad. It might yeah. be Bammies. It was my first time going over there yesterday. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Harry Otter. Yeah. Shout out to Harry Hot. I'm actually yeah. working with a project. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm a collab with uh, Terrence and mm-hmm. um, on this uh, extra pulp thing. You know, I got okay. some. I got something brewing for that project, so okay. I'm still in DC, mm-hmm. but you know, New York, back and, my, forth. Back and I got forth. You. I got you. My hands are in certain places that, mm-hmm. you know, just behind the scenes, supporting community, mm-hmm. you know, hosting events still on the low. Speaking of hosting events, mm-hmm. you gave me the opportunity for us to run that Juneteenth event that we had for the month of June. Oh yeah, you guys. The main thing that I liked about, you know, when people come through and deliver it and they do their thing for their project, that makes me happier than anything, you know, mm-hmm. to, for them to follow a dream and me to watch it grow, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know where this project might take you, you know, and yeah. I hope that it takes you wherever you want to go. And I hope that message goes across. But you're you're doing something that's um, it's self-rewarding. So I appreciate this whole thing that you focus on it's really brave I, 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 I appreciate that and respect to you and the team that's been doing this and people who's come out and supported you because it's people people need to know we need to talk about it we can't sweep it under the rug cause mm-hmm. this stuff is it's uh we gotta we get we want we want to grow from it you know we want we want to do better like um yeah um um yeah, mental health is a real thing, you know. When it comes to mental health, what's one thing that you say that you have observed gets swept under the rug quite often? Um, black culture, just mm-hmm. always, you know, like, you know, like, not to down our our youth. You know, I, I pray that our youth gets better and, you know, for all of us, but, you know, our youth has taken a really serious turn, you know, and uh, I think that how American, like, society, like, social uh, engineering kind of wants us to go down that route, you know, and, you know, and these, these, this, this, the music they're putting out. I mean, a lot of the back in the day, like for example, for me, back in the day, I was, I was really big. I'm still big into like most stuff. Uh, Yasin Bey and um, Talib Kweli, and not Talib Kweli more than um, most stuff. Let's say most stuff. Fairmont, Black Thought, mm-hmm. Rakim. Um, you know, these guys had substance rap, and they talked about stuff. You know, like how to treat a lady, you know, but they weren't calling them bitches in the songs and they, they had a way of doing it, you know, even some of the harder rappers even had a smooth side about presentation, which we don't have that anymore. You hear a lot of negative in our youth's music and it says a lot, you know, because it, you know, you take it in stuff. You, if you, if you want positivity, if you're going to look, you want positive you gotta give laws of attraction you gotta think about it you gotta manifest it and if you're listening to something that's so poisonous all the time i mean it's gonna affect the brain you know mm-hmm. and um they want that's what sells that us looking crazy on the internet you know and uh, it's uh it's deep, you know. It's it's just it's just deep. 
um, or what we could do, I could do, I try to do is lead mm-hmm. by example. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Tell me about that experience of leading by example. Um, like, what's an example of that? I play loud, dope music in my Jeep, mm-hmm. like some Miles Davis. Mm-hmm. And that's, 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 that's a lot for some people. They might look and, oh, he's cool, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's not listening to this. He's not, he listening to something that's out older than him, you mm-hmm. know? That my uncles and grand, you know, my folks put me on, you know? And then it sets a mood, you know what I'm saying? Uh, at my gallery, I usually play like classical. Um, mm-hmm. so would you be able to shout out your gallery? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, it doesn't have a, so I support women in the arts in LAPW, mm-hmm. the National League of American Pen Women. Um, supporting women and supporting women in the arts is something that I've been doing with them for now four years now Mm -hmm. and um, it's self-rewarding you know but also give it a make it a platform that people like yourself um, I'm working with um, all women pilot um, pilots jet pilots letting women know that they can fly that is very competitive it's a very male dominant mm-hmm. thing these are things the events that i'm hosting um are I'll, you aware of the percentages i'm not aware of the percentages exactly but i have a new uh, this will be my second event i'm doing with them this yeah. year mm-hmm. and um i'm really excited about it mm-hmm. um um but the percentages uh i, I couldn't tell you but uh um it's setting the it's just making people aware and that's the main thing and you know those the awareness could unlock a lot of things it could birth a young lady into a, wanting to be a pilot mm-hmm. from her mom and dad coming in the house talking about oh these girls just look at this pamphlet you know oh i want to be a pilot mm-hmm. then this young lady grows up to be a pilot oh, you know it's just that you know that they can do it you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like saying Barack Obama is president. You yeah. know what I mean? That opened the door of, oh, we can fill we can, those shoes. Yeah. yeah. And it said, Barack set a tone and how he treated his lady. I appreciate him so much for that. I can't judge him on what his job, what his, you know, his, his um, what do you call it? His, his job. Like, I'm not, I guess he did the best he can do. I can't judge that man. We do the best that we can do. And I don't want to be getting beat up for it for the rest of my life. So these people, that's a lot to take on, you know. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate Barack Obama. For real. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just picked your Barack scene. You're welcome. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go play ball later? No. Hey, he got a he got a sick J, man. <laughs> He's right up the street from me too. Cause I'm in Dupont, so mm-hmm. uh, I'm not gonna go knock at his door. But you yeah, because I mean? privacy is key. And privacy is nice. key. But yeah, I might write him a letter one day and say thanks. <laughs> just thank you. Just, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. You so, made a difference in my life. <laughs> so the reason I asked you, what have you experienced in terms of what's been swept under the rug, is because you have opened up doors for me in the past outside of what I covered in June Mm -hmm. and when you did that I came to realize am I asking enough for my community and the reason that thought came to mind is because contrary to belief I'm used to a lot of people saying no before I ever get a yes that's yeah you can get a lot of no's before a door opens yeah I know about that yeah So as an artist who has been Mm self-employed for 12, no, more than 12 years, how long have you, how long have you been an artist for? Let's start there. My whole life. I Mm -hmm. mean, I've always created things, you know, my mom always supported that and Mm -hmm. I appreciate her. My dad too, my pops, they supported that, what I was, you know. I've been doing photography. I used to be a backup dancer for Little Eye back in the day. So I used to open for like Destiny's Child, mm-hmm. Montel Jordan, Casey Jojo, this LL is Cool J. This is a deep <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Shout outs to Little Eye out in Japan, Okinawa, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to, and I'm in a video, a couple of videos with her as well. Yeah. It's just some old throwback stuff right there. <laughs> I can't believe I brought that up, but um, I've been doing art my whole life, mm-hmm. um, creating, problem solving, 
you know, being an artist is almost like science, being a scientist, because you're, you know, you're creating something, you know. Mm-hmm. Or, process of elimination. Process of elimination, studies, you know, I use, um, even in my abstract work, I use studies before I actually make the actual final abstract work. Mm-hmm. And the study is just, I usually use master paper, that way it, it, that item can also be sold later. What is master paper? Like uh, acid-free. Mm-hmm. Um, usually uh, you can get ones that specifically are for uh, watercolor, you know, you can add a medium that you can add your acrylic, you know, that way it doesn't, it's just a lot of mediums that you can, you can use to create, you know, um, work. I call mm-hmm. it work. I don't call my artwork pieces. My mm-hmm. It's work. It's my work. It's what I love doing. Yeah. And people support me and I appreciate that. I don't post a lot of my work. Is there a reason you don't post a lot of work? It's because sometimes I, you know, having a gallery, sometimes I don't even finish a lot of projects before they're sold, mm-hmm. you know, before they're, um, yeah, sold, you know, <clears throat> I'll be working on like nine different paintings and I'll have studio visits all day and then they'll start buying them and I'm not even complete but i'm just good at selling you know Mm -hmm. always be closing abc i mean i'm trying to make a living so i'll i can start over again you know i feel confident then that idea becomes a whole another project you know Mm -hmm. i'm like okay i let that go then i had a you know then you got a manager um organizing archiving making sure that you document Mm -hmm. you know that that's your work and sign it right and make sure you don't use sharpie and these hats are all fitting on one head yeah yeah you know you got to use archival ink to sign Mm -hmm. so there's a particular kind of ink that's needed for this yeah you got to sign you should you shouldn't sign in um sharpie because sharp sharpies fade you know Mm -hmm. uh uh, acrylic pen uh, is great you know a regular paint painting your signature but you should always not you shouldn't use uh, sharpie to Mm -hmm. um, sign your work okay and always sign your work that's good advice for people as an artist how have you maintained sanity in the not consistent um Just doing, staying busy, staying active, not, uh, you know, trying new things like, you know, like, um, you know, I did for a long time. I, 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 uh, I had a mentor, he's passed on, but, uh, he, um, he gave me access to a lot of his properties Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was constantly changing. I was making these different each you know location i would do jazz at one spot i'll have like you know like a not i hate to use the word after hours but uh it was like a a space where people can come and chill and you know I, release release you know being around people mm-hmm. is helpful too from you know in the north and being a, what did you, what was the question again so how do you find sanity in the unexpected basically because nothing for artists are scheduled vision boards mm-hmm. what's the importance of a vision board so uh, they just manifest there's like laws of attraction you know, like you make a vision board it could be on your phone it could be you know a little you know you had those collages on your phone you could take a few things like let's say the collage only has five slots well you put those five slots of uh, things that you want mm-hmm. you know um i i more so say need more than once and then uh i try to and then it's i might not get exactly that but i'll get something close and i'm content with that and that fulfills me and that motivates me and that keeps me going you mm-hmm. know and uh and that helps a lot <clears throat> and finding inspiration is really difficult you mm-hmm. know and and the norm unknown and the unknown unknown thank you do you remember the first time you found inspiration by yourself the last time i found inspiration by myself uh anytime i'm on my bike so i ride a bike a lot Mm -hmm. and 
every time I write a bike, I get inspired by something. Just, you know, uh, just self, you know, like eh, when I'm on my bike and somebody pulls up and starts cursing me out because I'm, I made a mistake. I don't engage. I used to engage with them, but now I've matured so much that I've been like, they, I, I will never let them have my joy ever. I can't. They can't. Because when I react, they win. Excuse me, and I lose. And it doesn't make me feel good when I react, so I stopped doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I had a problem with that for a while, because I would break side mirrors, you know, cars, cause especially if you're trying to run me over or something, you know? Mm -hmm. With a whole vehicle. With a whole vehicle, yeah. you know? And that bike life is real out here, you know? We, we live that, I mm -hmm. live that, you know? <clears throat> and my community of bikers also stand up against, you know, that kind of stuff, you know? Because, you know, that, that's, uh, that, that's, uh, levels you gotta just kind of, hurdles you gotta get over and, like, uh, mature, as I, you know, pretty much. Does inspiration lead you to peace? Uh-huh. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes mm -hmm. it inspires me to be... Uh, push the envelope sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, I used to do this wheat pacing thing and that's, and I wanted a certain kind of message. So I used to do this one, I, I can't really say what it is, but mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I was doing it everywhere and that adrenaline um, was not in my best interest for my freedom, you know, by doing wheat pasting in certain mm -hmm. places, but it, the message needed to be put, mm -hmm. you know, in places that were or are still existing and places that I wouldn't support, you yeah. know? Yeah. And my community shouldn't support, mm -hmm. you know? But, yeah. So, from our talks, you place value in expression. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? I can't run from what he's made me, you know, mm -hmm. so I try to embrace it and I try to just do the best I can with it, you know, and make income out of it and uh, share. Mm -hmm. I definitely share <clears throat> my um, my t my learnings. I try to always share what I learn. A lot of people hold back information, which is fine, mm -hmm. but it's very selfish. But yeah. uh, I love to share information. I love to watch somebody else sell a painting. It's mm -hmm. beautiful to be a part of that, you know, yeah. or have a performance. Like uh, my our jazz musicians or our performing artists, like I love to watch that. I love it. I need them, you know. Um, DJs, I need them. They inspire me, you know. Um, especially the ones that really come out and bring a new set. You know, mm -hmm. and we know who they are. Yeah, they out there. You yeah. know, and <clears throat> and they're still competing with and themselves. They're, and they're still competing with themselves. Yeah. You know, and I, I, we need that. Those, you know, those people. I really appreciate that. You know, we need that. Um, sorry, I'm like sidetracking. No, 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 you're good. Cut, you're cut good. a lot of that no, stuff. You're good. Out. I was actually gonna say, when people don't share mm -hmm. information. I've learned to come to understand that I didn't have their experience and there was a, probably a price that was paid for that information that has made them reluctant and wanting to share it with others. Yeah, I mean, some people watch people fail, mm -hmm. you know, and um, sad, but, you know, God don't like ugly, but... It is what it is, you know. But mm -hmm. um, um, I don't let I don't wouldn't watch somebody fail. I just wouldn't if they if I can give somebody good advice, which I try to give advice sometimes when I can and when it's appropriate, mm -hmm. you know. Just kind of give my two cents and be like, "Hey, I like this. You think this? You know, this is how I approach it, and that's what people respect out of me because I'm not coming at them like 
I'm da, 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 da. And I'm like, hey, what do you think about doing it like this? And I'm like, yeah, oh, I like this idea. It's a suggestion. This is a suggestion, but it also is planting a seed, that, mm -hmm. you know? And then they're, they're like, oh, this is going to work. Like, it, you know, some people will be like, I'll be like, where's your signature? Like, on your painting. And they just want a signature. And I'm like, how do you know it's yours? And I'm like, oh, it's on the back. I'm like, somebody can just paint on that, man. You know? And then they take in your work, you mm -hmm. know? So that kind of advice you know <clears throat> it's uh, sharing advice uh, I can tell you one situation I had at this um, this store this uh, art supply store um, a couple years ago I was I had got money from it it was funded for this project and uh, I had like four other people on the team for this project but I was actually at the store grabbing the materials and uh, <clears throat> I'm walking around, I'm grabbing all these stuff, you know, it's the, the front counter has tons of different things, spray cans, like all kinds of goodies. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm in there for like maybe an hour, I have these oil pastels in my hand, and I have some other types of uh, mediums in my hand, so the oil pastels are really expensive. And I, I see this guy at the end of the, hall, in the aisle, he's on the ladder, so I leave that aisle and I go into the next one just to get to the line. And when I get up there, he actually grabs my arm and like knocks a lot of the pastels out of my hand. Um, from that one second, I thought to myself, like, I could flip out because he assaulted me. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to know my rights. You know, so I said, I want everything on the counter for free. Everything that I have I'm putting on the counter, I want it for free. And I think that, I don't know why I'm bringing this up because this is a, I hope that people can take this information and you think about it and use it for themselves and, you know, in their situations. And I just, it's boundaries, boundaries. And I was just like, you profiled me mm -hmm. and then you assaulted me. Mm -hmm. You grabbed my arm saying, if I'm going to pay for that. And, um, I just stopped and took a a breather, a deep breath, and I was like, I want everything on a, I have on the counter for free. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna hurt you in the pockets. Yeah. So, and I won out of that, you know. Mm -hmm. And the staff was walking by. Everything okay, Tim? I'm like, see, your staff knows who I am. And by guy, first name. Yeah, by first name. And mm -hmm. here you are grabbing me, asking me if I'm gonna make me not want to come here, mm -hmm. you know, again. But I still support this place. But I'm not gonna let that one bad apple impede me from what. I need to get that, you know, yeah. see how that kind of, that microaggression of like, damn, I don't want to go in this store now because they've already, imagine if I flipped out and mm -hmm. hit them, then I go to jail because, you know, our, our our percentage is not on our side, Yeah, you know what I mean? And then, uh, and people think that that's, you know, we're, you know, hyping it. No, this no. stuff is real. Like, yeah. I'm calm. As and a, it's consistent. It's consistent. I, you know. And why and, is it always our job to be calm? And, right. And I'm always like, you know what? And we should be until this, you know, there's levels to that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that, that situation was an eye-opener for me. And it let me know, uh, you know, my worth. Mm -hmm. You know, it really... And you found your worth in that moment? Or you I did. I did. before? I knew my worth. I just mm -hmm. my how to control like my feelings into like like a situation like that. Some some of us would be like, "Yo, he da da da," and then you don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. But I made sure that I squeeze with the advantage of being like, "I want everything that's on this counter. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I want to save all this money that I'm trying to put into this project." Mm -hmm. You know? So those are more so the implementation of your worth, leverage, leverage, because yeah. there's value in leverage and recognizing <clears throat> when leverage is yours. And take your time, take your time, man. Coconut water good for the soul. Yeah, it is. Um, I I think that when that when that happened, it just just get it's just like problem solving. It gave me another way to approach, mm -hmm. you know, a problem, and uh, I won. And it was, it felt great, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't feel good being, you know, assaulted. accused, yeah. assaulted. But mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna say the name of this place, and mm -hmm. I, you know, but uh, it's not about that. You just showed up to live your life. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I was just trying to 
I'm thinking about other people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. It's totally like having a good time, vibing, just grabbing materials. Like, okay, boom, boom, boom. You know, mm -hmm. and then that happened. And then I was like, wow, the devil is trying to steal my joy right there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you showed up eating popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I got you. I'm, I'm gonna be calmer. Mm -hmm. Scary in it. And then <laughs> it is for them. It is. When we're calm, it scares yeah. the shit out of them. It is. As you know, I've experienced that quite often on the block. Yeah. For about a decade. Yeah, because when you yeah, when you used to hold down the door, you 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 you, you talk to people like, Oh, this guy he's not being like yo, 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 I feel comfortable. You know, it's like, is he is this a cool spot? Yeah. Come on in. You know, <laughs> some good folks in here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then they'd have to see me turn around and take care of a situation, yeah. which would really be a situation. Right. You just yeah. carry them out and. Yeah. I've seen you do that a few times. It happens. Um, I think some of my favorite moments is putting someone to sleep and waking them up to make sure they're okay. <laughs> yeah. It is. Because yeah. it's still community. <laughs> It is. Community it is. doesn't change. Right. The worst thing you can do is betray yourself within the community. Yeah. You know, I kind of fell in that category for a little bit. Not on purpose, but I was providing a haven. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it affected me more than anything and the people around me. Mm -hmm. And it affected my relationships because I let something get <clears throat> out of control, you know? I let I let things get wacky. I could have reeled it in. You know, I just... Uh, maybe I didn't have the right support team with me, but mm -hmm. I'm aware of what I had, and I was very thankful for the blessings and the experiences, you know? And moving on from that, mm -hmm. I'm growing. So now I, I don't, you know host those kind of events anymore just late nights you know mm -hmm. i do some jazz late night sets some it has to be productive yeah it can't be just people it has coming to have over. A point to gotta it. have a point yeah. yeah i'm not gonna have just people hanging out and drinking all night and mm -hmm. you know it's not it's not my thing you know also life is made for mistakes right yeah without mistakes who would we be yeah, exactly. I've learned so much, and this, and I, and, I, and the reason why I'm even sharing these things because uh, sometimes we can, re we can need to reflect. Sometimes you gotta think about like, dang, uh, how can I do what I'm doing right now better? And that's what I want people to look at this video and say to themselves, like, what am I doing right now? How can I elevate this bad boy? Let mm -hmm. me turn it all the way up, mm -hmm. you know. And that's important. I like to do that for my, you know, like when I create something, yeah. I like to make it go. Like I want to be able to, like if I'm making a large painting, I want it to be breathtaking when I turn around the corner, even for me, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I feel like I create things and I think I have great taste in creating things mm -hmm. and people usually reciprocate the work that I put out almost as just as much as or more than what I've done, you know, than what I put out, you know, sometimes I don't even see some of the stuff that they see and I'm like, wow, I didn't see that. And that perspective of them talking about my paint work, you know, it's just a lot of levels of, uh, you know, just turning it up, just doing your best. Don't half-ass it, you know, if you really love doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, don't be hard on yourself. Just put it out there. And that, you know, and that, that, that too, is a, <clears throat> a tricky place because you always want to present your stuff right. Excuse me. And you might not be doing it right, but that's what, you, that's why I always try to look at other people's things. I ask for advice all the time, but when I watch when like business deals or or how should I present this you know I need those kind of feedback to kind of figure out how to do well at it you know because I like to create projects that are timeless like you know and <clears throat> I, I do I do like making timeless projects I know it's kind of um, uh, it's not 
I was gonna say arrogant for me to say, but I, I think I don't think I don't think it's arrogant. I don't think I so think, either. I didn't mean I to use that be word. Better off though, explaining what does it mean for something to be timeless, so we have an understanding. Yeah, documentation of the work, like this, like things like uh, the jump for the life. Shout, shout outs to Maps Glover. Um, the the jump for the life is a life that was taken by fatal force. So we have a serious gun problem in America. And that project we did 2019. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, at that time, there was 257 lives that were taken. And Maps Glover jumped 300 times. And we did it in one day. There's no Photoshop to any of that work. It's just raw using a manual camera. And we picked historical spots through dc mm -hmm. you know and that project it's so beautiful i i couldn't ask for a better subject um maps and i collab I collabed on that and it's still one of my favorite works and um and i look forward to doing something some more actually i'm working with maps soon um it's a, a project coming in up in June first, so I have I'm helping out with the installation mm -hmm. with Maps Glover and um, Concrete Dreams. They know who they are. <laughs> you know. I love the shout outs. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I got. I can't. I gotta leave it because they're they're no, with their low key. You know, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a beautiful installation, and the community is gonna love it. It's shared. People are gonna see it walking by. You know. And it's gonna be up for a while. Yeah. What's the value of having a responsible team around you in case of a spiral or something going in the wrong direction? No, you do definitely need to have a team. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, not for everything, yeah. but pretty much, yeah. Team could just be one other person too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I need people to tell me when I'm wrong. I need that too. Yeah. You know, I need that. I need uh, c c um, construct uh, constructive, constructive criticism. criticism. Yeah. You know, um, I I need that. I need to be. You know, when some people, oh, you're so great. I don't want to hear that. I mean, I appreciate it. I you know, I'm very flattered, but at the same time, I. Uh, when people are like, oh, Tim, Tim's about to paint. I'm like, oh, okay, this is not like I'm about to make a, I'm not about to do a, 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 a Mona Lisa or something, but you know what I'm saying? I'm going to create something, but it's not, you know, but I appreciate the love and the, uh, the, um, the uh, confidence that people have in me and I've delivered work and I've been lazy mm -hmm. and I've, you know, half ass on stuff, but, um, majority of the, my my support team they all of my support team know that i come from a good place when i create my work and mm -hmm. i share ideas and i share knowledge of what i know mm -hmm. the best way possible you know and i always pray that that kind of energy always comes back around you know i'm self-taught with all that stuff um selling art i didn't know anything about it selling it until i met my mentor ego so he he used to buy art at this uh, this spot over in front of the FBI building, E Street Gallery. It was like a um, a place to like a auction house, and uh, he used to go in and buy art and then take it to his gallery and then resell. It. Like up, he used to sell one item that cost the whole lot that he just bought. So it's like as I say, there's a there's a there's a pallet with. 40 things on it he'll sell one item that he paid that whole and i used to be like how the hell that was so it's like to watch him do that i was like this guy is off the chain and then he had alzheimer's too you know so was, so he was switching between time periods yeah he was in doing, the middle of moments he's doing it he was a broker mm -hmm. yeah he got a report rest in peace I was gonna say, can we talk about what kind of person he was? Cause he sounds amazing. That guy was a, an interesting dude, man. He was a. I have nothing but good things to say about him. Um, fountain of knowledge. Yeah, he's fountain of knowledge. Uh, he always uh, and he always told me, go out and paint him, paint, paint Tim Ladeo, paint outside, paint. He's always saying that, and uh, I. 
I hear that in the back of my head and that's why I put my I paint outside even when I'm in New York I paint outside um, um, when I can when it's not the weather's good but mm -hmm. he always used to do say that and that actually helps me sell a lot of my work because I'll paint outside and people want to know and they see like oh this is a gallery but it's a studio and they like love the they work in progress they love to be a part of it because they're buying culture they're buying they're buying uh the real thing you know they can see it they're like oh this guy is actually creating something in front of us you know and during the pandemic i was working on this book uh called the joy of the disinherited mm -hmm. the joy of the disinherited yeah uh about uh it talks a lot about microaggression, mental health. It talks about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And creating the cover for this, um, uh, for the cover of this book, um, had opened up a lot of doors for my community and conversations because people always say, Tim, what are you doing right now? I'm like, I'm actually trying to work on this cover, this book cover. Uh, what is the book about? Mental health. And then that starts to open up conversation like what kind of like you know different things you know like read the book and you're gonna when it comes out read it check it out you know it's already out but mm -hmm. that's what i was telling people you know read this book check it out um but that book has really inspired me kevin dedner did a really great job with it um the book is really doing well with on um amazon um you can get it on amazon you can get it at a lot of different platforms and uh, you can go to the bookstores and get it um yeah the joy of the disinherited and mm -hmm. i created a cover and i'm on also i'm mentioned on page 100 uh i'm part of the team of uh with kevin denner and um he bought a painting from me um about a year before that uh he bought lost but not forgotten and i have trayvon martin and mike and michael brown in it um and it was just that painting was created the day that michael brown was killed because i was affected by it. i was like jesus like all these people just keep getting you know their our youth is just dying so <clears throat> i put this painting together in 24 hours you know and it's four feet by four so four feet by four by four you know and um i'm using acrylic oil pastel but I, it just came out and i just let it live and I carried it around for, uh, I had did a couple shows with Capital Bop with it, so it got a lot of exposure before uh, Kevin Dedner uh, purchased it, and now that sits in his home next to the original print piece, with my original work of the Joy of Disinherited book cover. So check that out, y'all. Okay. Observation. Mm -hmm. You do a great job of flushing your emotions in the moment. To me, flushing is getting it out. Mm -hmm. It's, hey, I have this thing. You don't define the moments as good or bad. You just know I need to get it out. Now. I need to get it out, yeah. Yeah. Even what me is, doing what this. What is that like? What? Getting it the out? the moment of getting something out. It's like right now. Like, I don't really ever be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Never. I don't, you know. Um, I'm actually ignoring these things and you know, you're to focus, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, um, I hope that what I'm saying is nurturing or it's, it's hitting things. It's yeah. I hope yeah. so. I want it to, I want this to be timeless. This is what we do here. Mm -hmm. You know, these videos can, you know, outlive us, you know what I mean? And, uh, maybe our youth might need to hear this. 10, 20 years from now, you don't know. Like, yeah. you know, like, oh, these brothers were dealing with this back in the day. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. we're still fighting that good fight. Yeah, the deep dive, that conversation yeah. started here so we can be here. Right. Yeah. We already did all that. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which, show us something new, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, trying to think of like uh, I know I'm kind of rambling and no you're not you're actually heading yeah. in the right direction um so you said you're on page 108 I'm on, on in the book mm -hmm. when when you all purchase the book I'm on page 100 100 uh, and so yeah I'm on exactly page 100 okay and it talks Kevin gives me a little 
you mm-hmm. know um, he talks he talks about me for a second because uh, it's a beautiful project because this guy buys my painting and then mm-hmm. a year later he's like I really liked working with this young man and I did a couple um, book signings with him um, selling prints just coming through support giving my perspective on the cover because a lot of people were asking how I created the cover and um, shout outs to uh, Bolivia um, Miko Art uh, uh, Leo Calasala uh, Armin Kuchos um, that's my I have a I have some work out in Bolivia La Paz and they sent me this dye it's uh, I don't know the name of it but it's powdery and you just add water to it and it's like a watercolor but it makes it has beautiful colors and I don't know what this material is an all-natural herb or I mean not herb but it's an all-natural thing and I painted the cover with it so that's why the covers are the, the when people are like how'd you get these colors it was actually a little bit of mixing of these mm-hmm. pigments that they've given me so you technically it, made an original color yeah and then there um, they sent it to me in Bible paper mm-hmm. so and aluminum foil Bible paper and, and aluminum foil and I just have these bags of them as part of some of my mediums you know mm-hmm. so yeah that was a and some of the colors on that cover too is a uh, um, uh, that uh, represents mental health. Okay. Yeah. So okay. a lot of a lot of subliminal messages in that cover. Mm-hmm. A lot. Um, and I made a purpose. few of them. Yes, yeah, on purpose. Okay. Yeah. It's. Um, I made a few samples for Kevin uh, mm-hmm. doing this project because the first one he didn't like it so much. It was not that he didn't like the work. It was just not what he was feeling like. It was projecting out of what he was his literature. You know. Mm-hmm. So. I made a couple more samples and he liked where I was going with this one and I, you know, this is what creative direction me- meetings do, you know, when you sit and talk with your client and be like trying to give them the best thing and that's part of the process because I'm selling a service <clears throat> and uh, I want this customer to be happy and I want to be happy because we're making something that's, you know, I want my family be proud of you know Mm -hmm. my community to be proud of that you know what I was part of to help you know it's just helping you know it's a you know it's just helpful to you know to do it like that and also the colors were attract I wanted the people to be attracted to the cover Mm -hmm. from a window and I was thinking like that too from the window yeah like if if the Mm -hmm. book is sitting on a shelf I want it to be like I want to look at this one you know? Does this correlate with your experience of painting outside and that openness? I think I curate a lot of stuff, so I'm really mm-hmm. good at composition and, you know, um, I do a lot. I do a lot of work with uh, interior designers too, so I'm constantly sanding and painting walls, or sanding a secretary, or painting a staircase, or. Mm-hmm making a painting that's six feet by four and a half inches four feet four you know four and a half feet you know because they need to have the dimensions perfectly in the space because designers they're very tedious about Mm -hmm. you know their cuts and the measurements sounds like me with my clothing yeah they have to the designer every designer i've ever worked for Mm -hmm. they're they're on hey tim i need a painting and it can't be no bigger than that I'm like alright got it mm-hmm. so that's me delivering this kind of work for these people over the years has opened up doors for me mm-hmm. and that's kind of how I got into the acting going back and this is through the designer so. mm-hmm. that's beautiful yeah <laughs> yeah um so you deal a lot with experiences I feel like that part of your life that is work not just presenting art is the culmination of working towards it so what's the value of painting outside because that sounds like something i've never wanted to experience but now i'm curious so painting outside like 
if I'm stretching a canvas. Mm-hmm. What's stretching a canvas? Is that a process? Or yeah, it's a process. And when I, when I, cause I, a lot of times I'm stretching my own canvases and uh, people see that and they're like, oh, I can do that too. That's great, you know? And from my method of painting outside, it helps me bring people in mm -hmm. to my gallery mm -hmm. and to sell art and try to close them. Once they see something, they're like, hey, or I'm outside and I'm like, I'll see somebody who, you know, maybe I just want to say hi to. And I'm like, hey, you look like you like art. And they were like, I do. Well, you should come inside and check out what's in there. You might be inspired, you know? So all these different ways of, you know, that's how I sell art. Like, mm -hmm. I sell it like that, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and it's what you put in. It's like being a car salesman, almost. Like, it's what you put in, into it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I sell a lot of other people's artwork like that. So it's not just me. I'm mm -hmm. making them experience what else is in there, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> this yeah, one I'm stretching right like, of yeah yeah and like oh this is a work okay so and they you know they ask questions and then hey you want to take this on today that's trial closing boom they're like nah um what, what's stopping you today you know mm -hmm. um I can't afford it well, how much you know what's your budget you know what would you like to put down on it mm -hmm. oh yo can you can we do that you sure can mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> you work with I work with them yes yeah. yeah and that's I've been doing that forever. Is there an art to meeting people halfway? Mm-hmm. It definitely is. Trial closing. It's just like you wanna you wanna you wanna make sure that you know I I've I've even like you know, I've it's it's a lot of ways to uh um, meet people halfway you know some people try to play you which is fun too and I've learned all those you know you know I've learned the best of it you know but um when I'm having an art show I kind of don't like being like some you know a lot of artists like to be in paint and all you know I like not to be known as the guy who is the artist I like to walk up to people and like what do you think about this one or I'll stare at one as if I'm a customer and that you know, it's just, it's a lot of, I don't want to say sorcery, it's just a lot of uh, levels to it. I think I got to witness that at Whitman Walker when we did the art yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's what I remember. Because the way you were moving around the room, Yeah. I just remember seeing the way you were presented, not the suit. It was the way you were standing and moving in the room. In the room. I remember more than anything else. I remember you were going to that. That's cool. That's what's up, man. That was a good project with uh, Claudia Watts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shout out to her. She's doing big things at uh, Eden. Um, yeah, that that was a interesting. That was an interesting showing, I, and I love Maps Glover's work. And uh, it was cool to be a part. I can't remember the other artists, uh, and I, I apologized for that. But uh, you mean who were in the room or on the wall? On the wall, and as well as on the panel. You okay. know. Yeah. Because um, I remember it was. I had a you photographer. on one side, Kristen on the other side, China in the back doing the sound bowls. Whitman Walk. Oh, no, no, I'm thinking about I'm thinking Lipkin about and Walken. That's what I'm yeah, thinking about. Yeah, I'm thinking about Whitman Walker when yeah. did the art show presentation. Yeah. And I brought James Baldwin. Yeah. 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 Because okay. coming out of the pandemic, we're still in it regardless but we were in that the pandemic at that it, time right it was or year two year two that was year two okay very weird um they were allowing open spaces and if you had people in establishments everything had to be open we were big on doors right. windows people were trying to get their um outside eateries together right and what i wanted to do for that space was how do I bring mental health to the people? Because a good day for me, product wise, is giving people ideas. Uh -huh. If I give you sound bowl therapy, you'll Google it. You'll look it up on YouTube. If you get to meet the artists I work with, you'll see their work ethic. You'll see their energy. Right. You'll have conversations with them about what they're selling. You may want to take that home with you or follow the person. 
because an artist, whether they're trying to or not, they inspire. And then with Get Home Safe in general, to me, I treat it as an idea and how do you make this idea contagious? Mm. And that's what I practice. I practice, I think my greatest hero is the common cult. Right. How do I become contagious? How does it get everywhere? Right. (laughs) Right. Happiness is contagious. It is. Smiling is contagious. It is. Without the force. Right. So, and I've told folks it's possible. I don't know if you know this, but if you practice smiling in your private time, your endorphins are higher than if you're practicing frowning all the time. But it has to be something that's natural, like Hello. laughing at your own jokes, having those conversations with yourself, having it with people, understanding they're laughing with you. And if not, you don't need to be there. Right. Very important. Right. Yeah. And it starts off as whimsical, but it has a place in everyone's life. Mm-hmm. What's I doing that practicing the smiling in the house? Just when you're chilling. And yeah. practicing smiling isn't the muscle movement of the motion. It's the thought association. Right. That's what you're really practicing. Right. So, the smiling choice. for me is thinking about my mom's home cooked meals. Yeah. Um, smiling for me <laughs> is thinking about a conversation I had with a friend that we didn't quite finish. But it was so fascinating that I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. 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 Like today, for example, I put up a clip on Instagram because I found out my boy had a shoe cleaning day and I found it out from his friend that I was interviewing, who's my friend now. But you can hear the pitch in my voice. Like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I put it up not because it's a shoe cleaning day. I put it up because that was my excitement in the reaction of his shoe cleaning day. Mm. Because what that shows is, oh, there's value and importance in that person to me. That's why it's exciting. Yeah, that's, I feel you, yeah. I feel you on that. That stuff makes me smile, too. Yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to think of... It's so many scenarios that I've been happy with my community. They made me smile or, you know, you see them, you know, say, performing. I'm like, oh, I know you're performing here today. Let me go stop by and check it out. Or, oh, mm-hmm. are you there? I'll come by and support, you know, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know? Um. Yeah. Smile. Difference. Yeah. If you're able to, and if you're not able to smile, I think there's power in not being able to smile and accepting it for what it is. That's usually the rougher ones for folks. So, what does joy look like for you? Because joy to me is more important than happiness. Joy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the joy. Joy is. Uh, what's joy to me? My kids. They're my joy. Um, my family. community <clears throat> but sometimes community can make you feel like you don't want to be dealing with it either <laughs> you're good man you're human you're supposed to be able to y'all <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but I you know I, 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 I've been I've been I slept well but um, mm-hmm. um I was saying family joy uh Joy is a, uh, what's joy to me? Uh, delivering a project, uh, keeping my word. You know, sometimes I, I've i dropped the ball, but I gotta keep it moving, you know? I'm not perfect, and I've dropped the ball plenty of times, and it has it made me stronger. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but that's joy, you know? Being able to keep moving, waking up. Mm-hmm. All right, gave me another day. All right, let me make sure I stretch, and mm-hmm. take care of myself, and eat some good stuff for my body. Yeah, make and, this day optimal. Yeah, and then rock. You know. Yeah. 
go a different route. I, I usually go a different route as much as I can. Is that important for you? Yeah. I have to switch directions, even if it's a longer way. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do that because it's... <clears throat> it just sets a tone. You know, I just like... Like, I don't always go to the same places. Some places I'll go to, you know, especially like, you know, St. X or... But most of the time, I will go to different restaurants, uh, hotel bars. I like those places, you know, just to switch it up, mm -hmm. you know, because that's where the fun is for me. I, I like going to hotel bars because it's, you get uh, a plethora of people from everywhere, you mm -hmm. know, new faces, and plus being in the city that most tours come here so it's perfect to do that uh, I gave you all a good idea didn't I <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important not to chase nostalgia yeah not to, no, don't chase it yeah it's there you just gotta live it mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you just yeah. gotta live and enjoy yourself and you know I like being like oh I'm gonna go check out this DJ tonight you know, I'll hop in for a second, support, you know. So, but I've been more working on waking up early, and that's been helpful for me. So I've been getting up earlier and earlier each day mm -hmm. as much as I can. And I'm trying to stay consistent <coughs> because my grandma used to say this, <laughs> ain't nothing that ain't nothing open after 12, nothing but hospitals and legs. So yeah. I, 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 think about that and um because it ain't nothing up and you know it's nothing really out there i mean cut that don't put that up <laughs> <laughs> the local way i was yeah. gonna say no i agree with you i've been told the similar things by my mom right you feel what i'm saying like um so my parents super protective of me and for my mom it's understandable my mom and dad because I'm the second oldest for them okay because there was one before me and she didn't make it and I was the second kid gotcha so I know where that comes from so I've always had this thing where I couldn't wait to grow up so they could be honest with me mm -hmm. and give them less things to care about that was me in my mind and right. then I realized, oh, when you get older, they're always going to be worried regardless. They're going to always be worried. My yeah. mom called me the other day worried about me because of all the shooting. I'm like, mom, chill out. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. I told her, I was like, this is She called this me like 14 this. times. This city's like, been this. <laughs> scaring me. I'm thinking something wrong with you. Like, <laughs> like dang. But love it. I yeah. would never... You know, that's love. And mm -hmm. I'm not complaining and I appreciate my mom. Shout out to my mom. Yeah. Juanita. How important was your family to who you've become? A big deal. You know? Mm hmm Big. My 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 parents, my mom. I have I have a big family, so uh, my aunts and uncles were very instrumental in my life. And uh, uh, my mom never, she just kind of supported some of the things I did. Not all of it, but she supported the majority of it, you know? She could. Yeah. Yeah. But also, I'm a loner, so my mom really, I was always, you know, I like my personal space. I'm, I'm a loner, and, and I don't like... Uh, you know, I like, sometimes I can just be stuck working for, in the basement or wherever I'm at, wherever mm -hmm. my studio is, I'll, I won't even leave the house. Mm -hmm. You know, it gets that deep that I won't leave the space. Not that I have a deadline, it's just it's inspiration. Space. It's just space, yeah. it's just like... It sucks you in. And I'm listening to the same songs over and over and over and over again. It's driving people around me crazy. And they're like, Tim, stop playing that song. And you came in, you heard what I was playing. Yeah. That was my 18th time playing that album since it's come out. Yo, I, I, I'm the same way. Just I gotta, 
because once something has a like a flow to it and mm -hmm. it makes me feel good i'm gonna yeah, that's use it. it for all it's worth that's it. you know what i'm saying <laughs> there's a couple mixes on soundcloud that i'm like Tch. you know and i make a couple mixes myself but mm -hmm. i usually take songs that inspire me and then i usually make mixes that work for uh my gallery showings you know mm -hmm. that way i can have a little classical a little bit of jazz mm -hmm. maybe spin a little bit of a D'Angelo in there real mm -hmm. quick on him or some uh, some uh, uh, reggae on him. Just How so important is the music to the emotional design of what you put together? It's hundred percent. It's it's it it makes the space. I'm big on. I I used to call it sorcery, but mm -hmm. it's uh, curating. Yeah. You know I like. You know, um, I have. I target an audience. I know how to target my audience. I know which. So I'm in Dupont, so I can't. I mean, I can play rap, but I don't play rap. Mm -hmm. And later on at night, out when the door shut, I'm playing like stuff that I, you know, <clears throat> I can't even play like, like I wouldn't, even, you know, like D'Angelo. I even though his stuff is smooth, I want. I don't play that. I do it sometimes, but I usually play like classical because. The audience in DuPont is just different, and you just gotta know how to target it, and then it works for me. You know, I listen, and I love classical. Actually, I don't like when I'm working. I don't like listening to music with words because it throws me off. You know, I like to hear things. It's like sounds. You know, it's important for my creative, you know, creative space. But if there's a, a mix that has like. 30 minutes I'll keep playing something over and that's just for me but that's how I work well too but mm -hmm. I can sing along with it and that's yeah. what I like about you know and it doesn't have any like it's not like yo ba -da -da -da. it's more like you know uplifting and you know sometimes this may be a little bit sad but mm -hmm. but you need the emotions I, yeah I weave it out pieces. I look at more yeah. of the even though it's maybe a sad song but I make it mm -hmm. a good song yeah I make it uplifting like oh there's joy and sadness yeah. yeah you can make a glass full by its emptiness I mean or sadness and you can make it happy it's almost like changing some words in a song I mean like it might say uh it might have another whole another meaning but mm -hmm. you change it to but it sounds like it's a song but you just switch a couple words just to make it fit you to, or mm -hmm. make it you know yeah. to make it happier or even sad even if you want to be like yeah da, 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 da. if you might be going through something that you need to hip yourself uh hypnotize yourself into you know or not hypnotize or motivating yourself to mm -hmm. get over it you know yeah. that's you know okay your music is definitely important so had this conversation yesterday mm -hmm. working on turning get home safe into a nonprofit next year and they asked how many hours a week do you work on get home safe and I told them do you want the honest answer They're like yeah it's like 75 hours easy a week jeez yeah. how many hours a week would you say you work on your art I'm working on it all the time like it, it doesn't stop I'm, I'm laying down in bed um, I'm making vision boards in my hand you know that's part of work you know mm -hmm. Uh, writing down ideas, uh, emailing constantly. That's work. I mean, that, that's part of the work. It's actual creating art sometimes, depending on, on the season. Sometimes, you know, it's like I could have, like, oh, I got free time. You know, cool. Mm -hmm. Let me go do this. Or uh, I'm focused on editing this video recently so mm -hmm. I'm making these videos uh, shout out to Ben Williams too uh, uh, on uh, and Wes Felton uh, on those brothers are really putting out a lot of dope music uh, and they're DC's you know local uh, part of the community uh, but uh, I did a couple of, I did a lot of videos with Wes Felton during the pandemic we produced 
video at the video at the video at video. We did a Amar Amar Aubrey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we did a video with that. Amar, you're right. Amar, yeah. yeah. There's so many projects we put out. Ben Williams has a song called March On. So if you guys are want to see some cool visuals, um, the visual visuals is done by me and another artist on that uh, song. So check it out. It's called March On by Ben Williams. A great song. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember a lot of West song because West puts out. He's like Prince with music, and boy put out music. That's how I am with the interviews right now. Yeah. Um, that's the reason I ask you that is because I consider work as soon as the thought is in your head yeah, you and work you don't out. let it go. Yeah. So like I am at 75 hours because like I was talking to uh, my girl. She was like, I right, well, what's your schedule look like? I was like, it's work, 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 you. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, it's not on purpose. It's just by yeah. design. But she's like, she's in there with the within the work. She's weaving in there. She's you know? in. Yeah, she's in. And yeah. It's just when I don't do work around her because the work needs me. Right. And you don't want to see someone you're into needing something else that's not you at the moment. Yeah, so. I've fallen victim from that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. It's, it's balancing a relationship within the work, you know. But how do you balance that? Or uh, have you found harmony in that? Sometimes, sometimes I don't. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes I could be really selfish with my time, and um, um, it could hurt. You know, their feelings or whatever. But um, I try to be a better communicator. I've learned that. You know, to communicate with my partner, and uh, you know, as much as I can, anybody. I just try to communicate better. I've worked on that really well for myself, and I'm actually proud of myself. So, pat myself go. on the back, you know, because I try to communicate. Even if, you know, even like if I'm out mm -hmm. and I'm just talking to people, I just practice like just communicate. I guess this acting job is getting pushing me to do this too. You know, as my presentation like even me sitting in front of this camera now i feel like my head is vibing back and forth you know my hands are moving um the uh, i have allergies so my sniffling is you know i'm all thinking about that but i didn't hear not one sniffle yeah. the whole time he was in here because the pollen is it's definitely uh, it's out here mm -hmm. um um uh, yeah um which you had just said you asked me something how do you do you find harmony in that the time. between your work and your partner yeah sometimes i can like dance with her you know i can do both um but also just gotta set boundaries because sometimes the partner might not understand like oh he works for himself i have a nine to five or, you know, very different, very different, yeah. and they don't necessarily see it in the beginning, they think they do, but then they're like, Oh, I see now, I really see. And then they start appreciating a lot of the little things that I do, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And they're like, Oh, this is big, but it's not little, but mm -hmm. I like, I'll be like, You know, I'll just take a break and go get, like, Hey, what are you in the mood for? Like, you know, grab a you know, my bike and I'll put up my little uh, picnic basket, not basket, but I have this picnic book bag thing. It has a cooler, put some fresh, refreshed cheese and all that wine and do something special, make it not a whole day, but just give her like that hour of that time. And then, and that's your best. That's my best. That's what I can give yeah. her right and there, at that moment. They recognize and I that hope that they, and if they don't, then I have to explain. Set, I have to set my boundaries and explain it, and mm -hmm. maybe find another partner. But you know, whatever. Um, that's reality. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's the reality that a lot of folks who are in our position have to face. We do. We yeah. have to face that. That stuff is not. You know. And you also want somebody to, like, I like I like to support. Like, mm -hmm. I like to be like, hey, you can do this. You can, you got this. Like, I'm always been like that. I never tried to, um, never been a comp 
never been competitive with my partners, but because mm -hmm. um, I'm in competition with myself, honestly, yeah. I can't even keep up with my ideas. What yeah. I look like trying to be competing with a partner, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I can't even think. Like, I got yeah. projects that I'm sitting on right now that's like eight years old, and I still haven't produced. I haven't finished it. Like the mm -hmm. whole write up. I'm like, but I've learned being in New York. I found. A lot of dope artists, they have projects that's over 30, 40 years old. Really? Yeah. And they're presenting them recently, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, an artist, her name is... Uh, I guess I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. Whoops. Um, I can't remember her name, but she is a artist in New York uh, she's actually showing now mm -hmm. anyway uh, let's see is this this is her but I don't have her oh this is no no I don't have the right up I don't have her name on this thing but uh, I was recently in New York and I saw this beautiful piece this beautiful work by uh, Sam Gilliam mm -hmm. and I used to work with Ann Lewitz I used to bartend at these art events at G, G, Fine, G Fine Art Gallery that she when they were here and um, Ann Lewitz is uh, Sam Gilliam's partner and uh, I had the pleasure to rub shoulders with these lovely people and learn a lot uh, from it but this is the you know Sam Gilliam you know Sam Gilliam his wow. work is dope that's Jesus yeah how do you even transport that it's uh, like cloth but he dyed mm -hmm. it it's really cool work that he does it's really beautiful it's breathtaking I love his installations I think they're mm -hmm. amazing did you have to learn to be in tune with yourself in order to be an artist? Mm hmm Or the discovery of yourself? Yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> creating things like, when I when I create something, mm -hmm. I'm totally channeling energy. Yeah. You know, I'm making sure that what I'm putting into it is like, because I feel confident after I'm done, like, you know, I'm like, cool. Like, I did this, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And I usually buy a pair of shoes every time I uh, sell a painting, or I buy my family member a shoe. A pair Is of that shoes. the celebration? So just a reminder of all the footwork I put into it and all the hard work. I don't always buy shoes, but mm -hmm. a lot of times, if I'm on a roll, uh, I'll definitely load up on some shoes. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and then I also give away a lot of shoes too. Okay. You know, okay. I won't wear them out till they're done. I mm -hmm. usually go and find homeless people homeless people in the area and give them the clothes that I don't I hand it I don't go to Goodwill or anything you like give that it to them directly. I give it to them directly yeah. what kind of what size pants are you you know mm -hmm. I've been doing that for years you know and I don't look for a reward or nothing I just want mm -hmm. somebody to be comfortable this who has less yeah. yeah you know not everything needs to be celebrated yeah I see people say hey look what I'm doing like that's cool but you know, I appreciate you doing that, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just, it just has a certain undertone when you're trying to get clout from doing something that you should be doing anyway. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Okay. So, let's talk about self-care. Uh -huh. You told me from your experience of the tour, you became a bit more in line because you already attuned when it came to mental health, mm -hmm. but now it's more on the self-care. Yeah. Tell me about that experience. Uh, Self-care, you know, is just being honest with yourself, you know what I mean? And cutting out bad habits mm -hmm. if you do have them. You know, we're all, we're not perfect, but um, I, I think a big part of um, mental health and, and self-care mm -hmm. um, is the food we're taking in. So if you eating bad it's gonna affect you it just does you know it just does eating bad is just it's just not good like some people have like a high 
sugar diet and that some people have like this drinking problem you know it's just that it's part of the diet you know mm-hmm. and uh, uh I've been working on that and I can see a big difference in my life by just eating and having a waking up early and doing some exercises and then rock out you know getting mm-hmm. the work done you know mm-hmm. uh, but um, what was I saying um, self-care uh, even like <laughs> dressing up when you don't even need to that's a certain kind of tone for yourself like you just feel it like I just you know sometimes I'll be like uh, I'm gonna go here you know I'm gonna wear this suit you know um, I actually have these large uh, Ghana robes are purple that's purple and I wear that to the grocery store in New York I wouldn't do it here but I've been doing that in New York because nobody knows me there so mm-hmm. I feel like I no could be a gonna question no one's gonna question I would do it here but then I'm like uh, you know I, I'm not I, not to say that you know I just I think it's fun to dress up like that and mm-hmm. go to the grocery store mm-hmm. and and I die in a full robe, African robe, you know what I mean? What's funny about that is the grocery store is probably one of the places you think the most concise thoughts. Right. Because you're diet. Because you're diet. If you're yeah. in tune with your diet. Right? And that's what I'm in there thinking like, All right, mm-hmm. we're going to get this and then you got this basket full of goodies and I got my glasses on in there and I'm mm-hmm. like, it's just another world. got my music blasting, you know. Um, Actually, great piece of advice. If you're ever shopping online for groceries to be delivered, never do that. But if that ever happens or you give someone a list, never do the list while you're hungry. No, I know. I don't do it's that. It's still the same whether you're there or not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't. I don't like eating. I don't like doing anything mm-hmm. when I'm hungry. It's just, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. I can't have conversations. I can't. I can't. You know. I'm like, hey, not right now. I gotta get back with you. You know. Mm-hmm. Is everything alright? Tell me. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Just leave me alone. Give me my space, please. <laughs> I'm hangry. Yeah. And you're fighting. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to fight two fights. Because <laughs> I definitely love my food. Mm-hmm. I actually, um, I said that to Harry yesterday. I pulled up on him, and everyone. I tell them I'm not going to the bar to drink. I ask everyone the same question: Is the kitchen open? Yeah, because I'm there for the flavor and the food. I actually came there for the chicken last night, and they were closed. Yeah. I was so mad. I was, bro, when I got to um, you got there late too. Bandies. But I got to Bammy's on time. Oh, so they closed at eleven kitchen wise, and they closed early. Okay. And I was like, bro, I came for the food. I was like, I'm Jamaican. I was like, if I come to the place, it's for the flavor. And what's what I realized is. It's a very dangerous thing when you eat food and you don't remember what it tasted like. Uh-huh. You got to be really careful of that. Because it's it's very easy to be in the mode of, I'm so hungry, I need something. And then after you eat, it's like, I right, see so you know what you ate. Do you remember what it tastes like? Was it memorable? Mm-hmm. Was it impactful? The answer is no. Might need to switch some things up. Oh, yeah. I definitely like something that's like impactful. Mm-hmm. Food wise, I love food. I'm a foodie. I'm definitely a foodie. I love my food. Been a flavor person a bit more as of late. Because of uh, coming out of the pandemic, I've seen the decline in the taste of food. And I don't think it's the quality that's gone down. I think it's the just get it out. As like now is the key. Yeah, I don't, I don't really support a lot of uh, businesses doing. Uh, a lot of restaurants is, is, are on my shit list because quality of food is like, yeah, it's like, damn, y'all really getting over on these people. At that price? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if I go to your establishment and I'm very, I only order this or this, that lets me know that I don't, I don't really plan on coming back here. Like, yeah. 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 I don't, and, and, and cus, customer service is big for me, too. If I, I don't really, I don't do any, um, 
if somebody's rude to me or makes me feel like I don't want, if they're cooking the food and they're kind of rough, or I mean not rough, but mean or whatever or rude, I don't, I wouldn't eat, I don't eat it. That um, works against the quality of the food. Yeah. yeah, and then sometimes I even when I see a chef, hey chef, how you doing? I don't know. How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. Mm-hmm. What you got on the menu today? You got some good stuff. That's what you got, and then he might be having a bad day, and I might have just cheer this brother up. You gotta be careful. That energy in the food. The energy, the energy in the food. Now he's like, I'm gonna hook this brother up. And my man, like, I tip him. He was like, Oh yeah, that brother hooked me up. He tipped me last time. Yeah. Gave me, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. people, you know, that's how I am. I like to communicate. I like to mm-hmm. speak to my neighbors, even if a lot of times they don't speak. But Red Man brought this up the other day, mm-hmm. and that post went viral. And I was like, Yeah, I deal with that all the time. Like I speak to people all the time, mm-hmm. and. I'm actually doing more of it. I like doing it. It's almost like smile. Mm-hmm. I'm actually like, yeah, what's up, man? How you doing? I don't care if I don't know him. I'm on a bike. Like, hey, how you doing? I don't, you know, like I'm on riding down the road or down south and I'm waving at the folks on the porch. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how I'm doing it in the city. Like, hey, how you doing, baby? Man, you looking good, girl. You know, there's something, this is smooth. It don't got to be, girl, you fine now. You looking good, girl. Mm-hmm. I see you, girl. You it know, changes the guard. it changes the guard. Yeah. It's like, you know, I like your hair. Yeah. You know. Oh, he didn't want anything else, just the comment. He doesn't want. That's it. There wasn't a price. Oh, that's that, just yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love doing that. I think that's so. You know, it's classy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you looking good, even if it's you know, I I'm not that way, but I can look at a guy and be like, yo, you looking good, man. Yeah. And they'd be like, yo, thanks, brother. He might need to hear that. That brother that's might need. To- no, you know what I'm saying? Necessary. That's it's necessary. Where, uh, the concept, Bad Bitches United, that's where it came from. Right. I said, uh, I don't know if I ever walked you through it, but I've seen men look at women and say, wow, she's bad as shit. Yeah. Right. Just period. It's like, yeah, no, she is. But she worked to get there. Right. Whether it's her DNA, natural looks, makeup, hair, regardless, it's work. Yeah. Right. And as men, I think we only settle for handsome. You feel what I'm saying? Like, oh man, I'm so handsome today. I just so say, I, I, I say clean. We do, we do clean. I just say but clean. I'm clean. Outside of the clean, there's no Poor. more. There's not more of a reach. You feel what I'm saying? Like, in order to be a bad bitch, that's work. Yeah. That's the mindset. You remember what I said about you being in a suit? And I was like, you. There. What I remember the most is the, about you was the way you stood and how you and moved in the room. room. Yeah, that's the biggest thing right there. That's the that's the key that's to it. Because that's communication before the words. Yeah, because your body language speaks mm-hmm. about the, you. You know, hands behind your back. You could be like looking at a painting is kind of guarded, so you think about the hands behind the back. Mm-hmm. That approach to the painting, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking maybe if I created something else, you know, I'm just, uh, my mind is just going way out there. Yeah. And then, you know. It's it's definitely the body, you know. Ninety percent of language is through body language, you mm-hmm. know. So, with that being said, how much Eight presentation, something like that, do you give to the art itself outside of the art? How much? Say what? How this? much presentation do you give to the art itself outside of the art? Uh, depending on what it is, like mm-hmm. sometimes I can. Um, show the process of creating something mm-hmm. and I'll put a lot of time posting letting people see you know what the layers of it is actually I do it a lot I mean use social media as my platform I'm actually working on a YouTube channel really send you, that my way I will I'm man come and comment on stuff I'm gonna uh, put together a lot of this I'm doing a whole um, pandemic I have this series called pandemic activities and mm-hmm. I was just I was filming every day when they were protesting, uh, you know, down this, you know, on uh, the plaza. I have the original footage of them hanging the, changing the name on the street. I have that footage, you know. Uh, I have a, a lot of footage. So I rode my bike through this pandemic, so I was constantly getting ahead of the march and shooting them coming. Me and I let this the crowd pass my camera for like a minute maybe because it was so many people and then I'll get out of the line and then cut in front of them again riding my bike and then filming on a monopod 
and that's how I carried it, you know, with the DSLR, boom, and shot it. And I was doing that, and um, that work, the pandemic activities. So, to answer the question, um, a lot of the wood panels that were boarded up on the walls, I took a lot of that wood, and I've been recreating works that James Baldwin was on one. So I've been taking that wood and repurposing it and making art of it. And I have so much wood that it's overwhelming and I probably will God willing, I can work on all this work and create some beautiful work. But um, yeah, that's the process is uh, the documentation, you know, and I have a hard time with sharing stuff sometimes. I'll keep it and I'll hoard it. But I feel like that work 20 years from now, somebody's going to be wanting that, my, that work. Because I shot, I have like maybe 100 gigabytes of video and photography of that whole protest, of the thing catching on fire. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, 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 that's a, that was a moment in time you know what I'm saying and uh yeah how do you emotionally walk away I cut it off I'm really I'm, I can be cold you know I'm, I can turn off like that and I'm it's a gift and a curse you know um uh I can just kinda you know I've seen I've people have seen me like work on something and then I'm not digging it at all because it's like I'm, I'm like I don't like this and I'll destroy it and they're like yo are you crazy? But that's honesty. Yeah, I'm like no, I don't want. It. I'm not creating it to become, you know, I, it doesn't feel. Right. I've done this before and that's what I, you know, or whatever the case may be. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna keep. I like to create something new every time, and that's why I do this. You know, I that's like. What living is about. Yeah, every time I have to create something new. Like every time I want to create something, I never want to make the same thing over and over and over again. You know, I'm an artist. I it's like breeding. I have I I gotta create. You know, I'm constantly creating um, and thinking of angles and you know like I'm constantly doing it but uh, I feel like the long term my work will show for itself like later and I'm patient I might not be living when I get shared that stuff but I'm okay with that you know I don't think you're romanticizing it either and that's important yeah like <clears throat> you um as someone who's an artist there's the romance mm -hmm. and there's the process. <laughs> yeah, the process is the process is real, bro. Mm -hmm. The process is a real thing, you yeah. know. Uh, I work in a, I, I, I host, you know, events, but then I also use the same space to also create art. So I'm constantly I'm cleaning up my station, so mm -hmm. that can take away from the process too. Yeah, and then being organized with that is like, and then going back and like, oh, I got. Oh, I, I forgot I put you away when I cleaned. I forgot about you when I put you. Oh my God, you look so good. Let me start working on you right now. You know, yeah. Um, the process is the process is a lot of times the beautiful part. You know, for mm -hmm. me, I I, I like to sh share that. You know, the process. Well, I have a series right now called Let's Dance. And um, what inspired that? So I'm working with five different types of blacks, and um, it's black and white. This art is black and white. Acrylics? Uh, oil, Oils. acrylic, mm -hmm. um, pastels. So mm -hmm. it gives a lot of texture. But uh, I did a bunch of studies on how I wanted the layers of the white, because the layers, the white has layers, but then the black has layers too. But the white is just one color, but it's just thick in certain areas, so mm -hmm. it gives it depth. And and I call it Let's Dance because um, I don't name it. I let I let the customer name it. Whoever. So I have so I have sold about fourteen of them right now, and uh, 
One, uh, it was uh, recently purchased. Uh, this wonderful family out in Maryland uh, got one in their living room. And uh, the wife was like, uh, what's the name of it? I was like, it doesn't have a title. And the husband said, who needs a title? And I named it, who needs a title? So now they're part of this, it comes personal, you know? And that adds to the story. And that adds to the story. And then I sign it, and then that's theirs. And that's the dance. That's the dance. Let's dance. So it's black and white, which is usually like black. It's usually like, oh, it's it's depressing or whatever. But it's actually let's dance. So it's like people are like, oh, this is cool. You know, mm -hmm. it's like uh, that work I will let be shown. Uh, I'm trying to. So I put my artwork in a lot of hair salons. Mm -hmm. So I know women take stuff home. So mm -hmm. this is why I put it in hair salons. That's my that key sounds to like that. an amazing strategy. Yeah, I've been doing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I I look for hair salons. Uh, Did anyone inspire that? Um, I have big shout outs to um, the parlor on um, U Street. Um, um, Rebecca has supported me and I have my art working there for almost a decade now. And I really appreciate that. I need to revisit her and switch some art out but it's so much pressure sometimes you just kind of keep put you know trying to produce produce and mm -hmm. and then you get sidetracked and then other things come up and then it's not that i don't want to give something new it's just i want to give you my best but i can't right now let me you know but it, it's it wasn't it just it, it just i just know that women take stuff home uh, i didn't want to put my i would never put my artwork in a coffee shop which i did once but mm -hmm. i did it at big bear i think some of my work still still there but oh um but uh my the art goes into uh hair salons and uh i i uh looked for a couple hotel not hotels but new apartment buildings they the uh interior design department they always need art so that's approaches the way i make a living you know and then i'm a carpenter so i did a lot of the uh restaurant outside sitting areas that's what i was doing a lot of too during the pandemic that's how i stayed I flow, I just hustle or whatever, you know. Oh, you guys need that now? I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then I can hire friends, you know. I can be like, yeah, you want to do this with me? You know, they be like, ah. And then I'm like, stop being lazy, dude. Come on, are you going to be <laughs> delivering food all day? You can you can take a day off, help me with this, and go back delivering food, you yeah. know. And my that's, like it. Yeah, that's my, my community is there like that, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, you, you delivering food tomorrow? Uh, what you got in mind, Tim? Come help me out, make this joint. You know, it's funny. You're technically 007. Because those are the people who do gain the most information from just being there. Yeah, I sit around and absorb places all the people time. People talk about anything when they think yeah. you're not listening. Yep. Yeah. And I people think I'm aloof a lot. They'd be like, tell the look, no, I'm not. I'm actually very here. You know. <clears throat> I might not be paying attention to you, but mm -hmm. I'm here, you know. But that's more of a byproduct of you working on art, the process. I'm always in my head, too. So I'm yeah. always constantly thinking about art or, you know, what to make or there's a, so I, I like, I, I, like before I say anything, I had, you know how I had these, um, I've been working on art and I said I, I have a target audience but then there's a side of me who wants to share like my Wu-Tang side my my Cormac Capone and Oriega like mm -hmm. era like that deep that heavy rap you know what I'm saying he hip hop you know Both sides of chance. that push a T you mm -hmm. know I want to push more of that but I don't want to use my platform so I'm going to make an alter ego type of thing you know mm -hmm. and I'm going to figure out the name and then I'm going to let that platform let this out because i want to do it bad but i just don't have the tools i didn't put my tools together to have it so i can present it right and i mean using art like some of my projects i can be working on like you know fixing one of those things outside and i can time lapse it and use some v vulgar you know hip-hop you know what i'm saying some real stuff you know like some you know, like some ODB, 
yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. some you know some even some of the new cats they have some dope stuff too but I, have, I haven't really explored too much with it because it's a lot it's, it's a lot to follow it's like a lot of littles I don't you guys are kings why is everybody little <laughs> my name little little what little little like dang I don't understand that at all I hope that a couple years from now they're gonna be like I'm gonna change some of them do they some of them do like little Bow Wow wasn't he was a little Bow Wow right mm -hmm. now he's Bow Wow yeah yeah see that's what happens yeah but a lot of these guys are grown men though, but they're mm -hmm. a little baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, sorry, sorry, right, right. Yeah. No, 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 you're good, you're good. What would you like folks to take away from the book? I don't know what they would take away, I, knowledge. Mm -hmm. You want to reference it one more time in case they want to look it up? The joy of the disinherited by kevin Dedner. um the book is a must read it's it's a must read it just and it's it's a fun read i think that it is it it needs to be talked about it, it like what you're doing but it it needs to be talked about because people are going to start using this like I mean, not people, I didn't mean to say it like that, but mental health is like, you know, it's, you know, I try to reach out to my friends, even though I don't talk to some of my friends all the time, but I, I try to check in sometimes, be like, yo, how you doing? Just to make sure that they're, they're thought of, you know, I, I try to be like that, but it's, it's hard to do that because there's so many people, you know? So I think this book will... I, I, this book is like a, a key. It's like a, I'm not just saying that because of, I'm a part of this project, but I, it, it's I'm really proud to be a part of this project because it's it's necessary. It's super necessary. We need we need this uh, people need to talk about it. People need to be aware, and when they have awareness, they can also attack maybe the problem that they may be having, you know. And that's what it's all about. It's not about a story about somebody. It's just like this is about us. That book is everybody, you know, and not just black and white. It's Hispanic. People can reference this book in many shades, and that's what's beautiful about this book, you know. Um, it's important and a lot of psychiatrists were also as part of this project too so this book is a really big deal yeah it's really a big deal <clears throat> shout out kevin one more time kevin denner great book and i hope to be working with him in the future um you know he just dropped one book yeah, i'm pretty sure He's working on some other stuff, but um, we'll keep you posted on that, you know. All right, so where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, you can um, you can find me on Instagram. You can, you can page me. Um, Bluetooth note. Classic. <laughs> Shout out to Dave Chappelle. It's a, it's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you can catch me on Instagram. My name is T I M O T E O Murphy. Um, Facebook, you know, all those platforms. My, it's just my name, Timothy O Murphy. And I want to apologize for um, the uh, scatteredness of my Instagram. I'm working on putting it together and be more organized. Um, uh, I do a lot of posting stories. I make a lot of videos. Um, right now, you can catch me at the National League of American Pen Women. Um, you can catch me first Friday of every month in DuPont. Because um, I do first Friday. I've been doing first Friday in DuPont for oh, uh, about eight, nine years now. Um, and it's perfect for early outing. So if you're in D.C., um, a lot of galleries in the area are open. And you can they're free. You can walk around get some food, 
go look at some art buy some art take some home change your home be inspired and uh yeah that's it that's how you can get a hold of me or you can inbox me if you're interested in making a custom if you need a custom painting or if you want some of my prints that you see on my instagram uh like i said i am uh, working on a website that will have the pandemic activities uh i know it was a rough time for us but at the same time i captured the beauty in it so if you want to check it out that work is available yeah all right, this has been another episode of Mental Health Monday. Peace.